Men are done with the nine to five, right? Let's face it, nowadays society's collapsing, men feel out of place in the workplace and um, this system doesn't seem to get that. It's not a smart idea to alienate and demoralize and create a disillusioned group of working age, military age men. I would say if you're a man earning from anywhere, these are just rough numbers, from say 30,000 US dollars a year to 150,000 US dollars a year, and you're in the military aged demographic, which I would say is 16 to 45, just rough, rough numbers, that traditionally the demographic that would you know, be in a positions of power in some sense across society, the Roman Empire, any empire, any civilization, right? That demographic is being treated the worst right now. If you've got older men, they might have tons of money saved up and invested through their investment portfolio and things like that, having real estate investments. But the core demographic that maintains social stability, to put it as nicely as I can, uh, that prevents civil unrest from happening is that demographic. And the, given, given the fact they're treated like second-class citizens, they're not feeling good at work and participating in a workplace where they're often given the short end of the stick while you know the older generation of men over 45 the baby boomers the, the feminists and the woman at workplace all get preferential treatment over the core demographic that really builds and maintains a civilization so let's hear a bit more from these men who say they're done with a nine to five and i told him i would rather make thirty thousand dollars a year working 12 hours a day whatever 80 hours a week working for myself over the imprisonment of sitting in a cubicle for eight hours a day, getting paid a hundred thousand dollars a year at some cushy tech job or something like that. You see, I believe so much in just my own personal freedom and my own ability to decide for my own life significantly far outweighing ever having to work for somebody else and be a slave and having to show up consistently to work with somebody else. And I, I dreaded that, that thought of working inside of an office and having to work for somebody. And especially the concept of trading my time for money. I could never comprehend that. Like I would rather go become a stripper or I would rather go do like Upwork or some sort of thing like that. Or I would go find a sales job for somebody if I really had to do it. I just, there isn't a, a bit of a bone in my, in my body that wants to work a job at all. And it, it got very concerning for a lot of people around me when I was going through a lot of these phases and trying to figure things out. Like people were concerned for me. They're like, Devin, like, why don't you just go get a job? And you see, like what led up to this was... I realized that. So to, just to feed back off that point he's making, we'll go back to a, another clip on this, right? So self-employment is better than the nine to five, I would say. But what's interesting is that comparative point. And maybe you can let me know in the comments, right? At what point would you say uh, you'd prefer a lower salary in self-employment versus a higher salary in employment? And I also, also see the debate online between how much of a pay cut would you be willing to take if you could work remotely versus in the office? So he brings up like quite an extreme example, you know, making 30K being self-employed, working 12 hours a day versus working a nine to five, being in the office and making 100K. Now there's quite a big difference between 30K and 100K compared to how much money you can save and invest to retire early effectively, right? So some people might opt for the, the stable, even though it's not so stable, the stable nine to five office job, right? So let me know in the comments what you think, what would be their transition point in terms of the money you'd make what pay cut would you be willing to take to be self-employed what pay cut would you be willing to take to be in a remote job versus in an office job and the other thing would be i understand what he's saying you know time freedom is very important for people these days you're having your own life your own freedom your own um, ability to you know live your life at your own pace because it does feel like this system is pushing people to live a faster and faster paced life to the point where they are having mental health issues right you don't want to always be trading your time for money right and many people they're fed up of living in this this box life you might have heard the phrase or metaphor you know people live in a shoebox small apartment they they look at boxes which would be their screens or their laptops they're in a box cubicle in the office this type of like um constrained almost animalistic lifestyle like controlled animal lifestyle like you're a, like the rat in a race uh, like the hamster on, on a hamster wheel like a cage zoo animal it does feel like humans are being more and more constrained by this system right now another option for you to consider there if you are sick of the nine to five and you are a man is you develop sales and marketing skills and you can get a sales job where that's more commissions driven i think that's good because then it's a bit more motivating you're not going in 
to the office and doing the same work day to day and regardless of whether you do good or bad work you're still getting paid more or less the same even with a small bonus or promotion every few years if you're working a sales job you're kind of more driven every day because you're like oh i need to make more sales each day to make more money each day because you get paid a commission on each sale that you make you get paid these kind of significant bonuses so it's a bit more closer to being free and being self-employed even though you're working an office job and it's a good skill set to have so that's another option for you to consider if it's not self employed or remote work look into sales jobs i think that could be a good option for some of you out there of four hundred dollars and i did the math if i wanted to become a millionaire dude that was like freedom if i wanted to become a millionaire and i was getting paid four hundred dollars a week then that would have taken me 50 years to get to the point where i was a millionaire at that point i realized that <laughs> this doesn't even make sense and you know, this was like, I was going to go to school. I like, really built the value to me. I was like, okay, well, if I go get a cushy like, tech job or something like that, because for me, I liked uh, like computer science and programming at the time. If I get to go, go get a tech job and I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, they have like a decent salary. Now this would be after like, not having any sort of uh, taxes. Like I can figure out a way to not pay taxes. If I have consistent income, I never get laid off and, I'm, and my income never drops. And you know, I never get laid off or fired or anything like that. I don't make somebody upset for, you know, not being compliant or some stupid thing. Like I'll get laid off or whatever the hell's going on in all these tech jobs these days. After 10 years of working, whatever, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, then I would hit a million dollars. And that's if I had no expenses, I had no taxes to pay somehow. I know they got taken out of my check. It would take me 10 years. And if you really do the math, it won't... if you really do the math, it's going to take 25 to 30 years to even possibly have the chance of becoming a millionaire. So this is a good point here, right? And I've done the math. I'm sure some of you have done the math, looking at your current salary, what the salary increase could be, what the inflation rate will be, what the uh, tax rate is going to be, or student loans you've got to pay off. Um, you know, how many years it would take to get the promotion, how much money you can save and invest versus how much property prices are increasing. And when you do the math, you realize the system is like a deliberate trap. It's just putting you at certain income ranges that are going to really limit your life, right? So it's deliberate. The system has deliberately been structured, you know, at the back end, the, the social controllers, social programmers, however you want to define them. You know, just to have everything at the right level to keep people going and not help them prosper because this system doesn't want people rising to positions of power and monetary and financial freedom. It just to keep you going and, and propping up this system, right? Um, so as I say, it's a deliberate, deliberate system, the way it's structured to make you be working 50 years to become a millionaire, for example, or the salary is just enough to pay for your basics now, not even for a family or a house. So it really does make you think the system is openly saying you through the web, uh, WEF, uh, globalist agendas, that they don't want you to have a family, they don't want you to own a house, they prefer people to be living in apartments, uh, living alone. So this salary will, that used to be able to pay for a wife and kids, now the salary is just barely enough for you to survive and have the basics as an individual person. So that's not a coincidence, it's all rigged, it's all fake, right? Now, the other thing I wanna say is about tech jobs, because he mentions having an interest in computer science. And I know some of my viewers on the channel, regular viewers, I've seen the comments, you work in tech jobs. And I think that's great. You have a good skill set that will be in demand over time in the future. But as you can see in recent years, some of those high paying jobs, they're unstable. And it kind of raises the point that there are no safe options. You can go into a high, relatively high paying career, like tech, finance, law, medicine, things like that. But at the end of the day, they're not really safe long-term options. You always have to be building your own thing because the system is putting you in a position where it's kind of seeing you as disposable, even if you're a highly skilled employee at a major, you know, uh, highly skilled job, right? Like tech or finance. Um, now, the thing is the nine to five is not safe or sustainable over the long term. And that's why you need to be looking at your own options. The system doesn't make sense. Lots of people say, oh, the system doesn't make sense. I don't get why it's built that way. It's not meant to make sense. It's meant to trap you. Like, it's a feature. It's not a bug. All these flaws people are picking up. Oh, why is the tax so high? Why are they wasting our tax money in an overseas conflict? Oh, why are they putting up all these rainbow flags? You know, why don't they have the flag of the country up? These are all deliberate things to demoralize you and to push for certain agendas that the globalists however you want to define them actually believe behind the scenes right so what i recommend you do is to figure out if you're on a particular career whatever it is now you're I'm not trying to you know, talk down anyone, but very few people make it to the senior levels and you're gonna be salary capped. And salary capped just means figure out what is the salary of the person who typically um, has been working in your career for five, 10, 15 years 
and what level they're typically at. So they'll probably be at a mid-management level, like a vice president in many financial roles. Many people make it to vice president, which is a mid-level role. They're not going to make it to managing director because there's only a few roles for that and loads of them roles are based on friendship or really kind of selling your soul in some sense to make it to that level so if you know you're going to be salary capped in some way figure out what that is figure out okay what does the average vice president mid-level management make in my industry would I be happy on that salary or do I need to find a way out or how long could I sustain myself at that salary before there is someone being fired like myself being being subject to a layoff for example how long could I um, potentially look into you know, freelancing opportunities? Am I building a skill set that is sustainable for that? Because the truth is many people at middle management roles, as I mentioned all the time, those roles are completely bloated. There's so many people I see in their 40s or their 50s, and they're working these corporate jobs that are kind of really not needed. And when these systems, when the system is kind of sustaining them and giving them kind of, I would say, a meaningless job in a sense, when the system goes, okay, we've got too many people in their 40s and 50s doing middle management roles that we don't really need, because the juniors are actually actually doing a lot of work that's the people in the 20s and the 30s are doing the majority of the work then this system is just going to fire a whole bunch in their 40s and 50s and it's really going to show the people who did save and invest their money at those higher salary levels and the people who didn't and the people who are struggling right so this system really as i say is set up for you to fail and you've got to find out what the fault points are that impact you directly because it's easy for all of us to be caught, caught up in oh, yeah, I've seen in the news there's bad things happening with this politician or that politician. But where are the fault lines? Like in an earthquake, there are fault lines where the earthquake will split the earth, right? Where are those in your life? When, okay, we're hearing about layoffs, but when will they impact your company or your industry or your niche, right? You see all these things about um, social instability, but when will that impact your city? And how, how are you planned for that? Have you meal prepped? Have you bought up supplies if, in case there is riots in the streets? Have you, for example, develop your skill set in case you do lose your job next year? Because I'm going to make some other videos that are coming up soon about the layoffs in 2025. So you've got to be planning ahead for these things. I declared at that point, I'm going to do whatever it takes to figure out a way to become one of these people. I can't sit in a cubicle. I can't go, you know, be a part of some sort of a dictator of a boss, go work under a dictator of a boss and have to go sit in traffic every single day just to go get paid a measly hundred thousand dollars a year to not even be able to become a millionaire after until like 20 at the best 20 years but more likely 30 40 50 years like, it just actually doesn't even add up so i decided i was going to do whatever it took because at that point i was just so pissed off i was like what the hell and that's when i came across doing real estate um, that's when i came across doing youtube and i came to find like how much money that you could actually make as somebody doing youtube somebody doing real estate. And then now these days, it's a lot more common. And I say like I found out about all this, this was like 2017, 2018. So the year, like the time of like an influencer was still kind of becoming a thing. Like we were just now finding out about how much money these people were making. Um, but it wasn't like where it is today, where it's like freaking everybody has an OnlyFans or whatever the hell and like all this other, <laughs> everybody is. So that's another good point there, right? So when, you, when you're when you working on your own thing, I would say think about three things, your business, leverage, and the assets. So your business is, of course, your side hustle where you're developing a unique skill set based on your kind of niche and what you're good at um, promoting yourself as. Now, there is the leverage between switching, say, between one job and the other in your current a traditional career path, right? Do you have the leverage in the sense of savings and investments in case you're unemployed for some time? Do you have the leverage in terms of a good skill set and experience to switch between companies? And are you requiring acquiring assets? That could be a variety of different things. Are you acquiring assets in the sense of stocks, ETFs, gold, Bitcoin, silver, um, real estate? Are you paying off your paying down your mortgage? If you plan on leaving the country, leaving the West and living in a cheaper location, are you paying down the mortgage so you can rent out your apartment to someone else who could stay in your apartment in, in London, for example, while you live in another country? So all these things are important, right? And what you have to remember is that you can't have a dictator, right? And the dictator would be your boss at work, right? Because th this is what it's really like to work. You have like an authoritarian dictator who's the company you work for or your direct manager or the head of the department. And they can dictate when they snap their fingers, they want you to travel to the office and commute. But when they snap their fingers and want you to work from home, you got to do that. And it's kind of being stuck in this cycle of, these people kind of control every aspect of your life. You know how much time you can spend 
doing your hobbies with your family and things like that. And that's why it makes more sense to look into the self-employment route. And many men are realizing they, they want more autonomy. Men aren't demanding, oh, I need them to be a millionaire now. Men are demanding, we want some autonomy over our lives. I can't be a, can operate like a slave. Because in, in the past, these nine to five jobs did have maybe a degree of flexibility or they were set hours. You did have time for your family or, or friends or whatever. But now it's kind of been like, oh, it's a nine to five. Oh, it's an eight to six. Sometimes you have to work late. Sometimes you might have to come in early. Sometimes you might have work on the weekends. And a lot of these things they're typically telling you that are ur aren't urgent. And you, by the time the manager look, looks at the work, it's a few days go by. So it's like a lot of times you're just being fed all these lies to kind of drain you of more time, energy and effort that you have. And a point there is around the 100,000 US dollar salary. Now, it depends where you live. In some places, that might be a lot of money. In other places, it might not. And typically, when the, ta when the salary is that high, like in London or New York, they typically have a lot higher taxes. So you really got to think carefully, like, as I say, about the salary that you can potentially earn in your field of employment, where is the mid-level where most people end up at. And the thing is, you can be highly skilled, but a lot of people end up at the mid-level of their career and they end up in the middle management rather than senior management, not because they're bad at their job, not because they don't have the technical skills, but a lot of the social skills do rely on people being quite ruthless and cutthroat and undermining people and, and being fake nice and things like that. And that's what holds people back from earning higher salaries. It's nothing to do with the actual uh, ability to do the job. So let's check what he has to say here about the waiting for the age of retirement and so on the math like i've done the math before the average age of expectancy is 72. the average age of retirement is 65 these days and so if you think about it you go to school for your first 18 years probably 22 if you go to college maybe you know maybe 23 24 it takes you a little bit to graduate and then you work 40 years of your life to go work for somebody else a dictator or a boss or whatever and then at the end of the 40 years you're 65 you literally have seven years to enjoy your money if you live to the average age of the 72 as a man the math ain't math in there. It doesn't even, it doesn't remotely make any sense whatsoever. And that is how I realized like I can't work a job. Like the, it just doesn't make sense. I am, you know, I view myself as a very intelligent person. I feel my, like I'm very smart. In a lot of ways, I, I'm very dumb as well. Like I, I, I'm very like flip sided of like double edged sword there. I know I'm very smart, but I'm also know I'm very dumb. And I thought that I was like, I am way too smart to go down this pathway. I what can we learn from this, right? Now, the whole point about this system being rigged is very important here because it shows how the system will deliberately keep you working to retirement age. And by the time you'll kind of, you know, have less energy and want to relax, this system will neutralize you right in the sense that when you're younger and you got more energy and you're thinking about your know, self-employment the system wants to keep you busy it wants to keep you frustrated preoccupied and stressed out it wants you continuously working in a job that you don't like developing any bad habits coping mechanisms to deal with the depression of that job feeling feeling kind of miserable and um, by the time you're, you've got the money to live life on your terms, you don't have the energy to, to live a good life, right? And that's what I realized a couple points there. There's a phrase by Joe Rogan, I think, about living, about how men are living lives of quiet desperation. They don't have the time and energy to, to keep going in this system. And in addition to that, they'd be stressed out. And one thing I noticed is that what is good about the generation of people in their 20s and 30s right now, the men who are done with the nine to five life, they're looking at alternative solutions, whether it's becoming a freelance or a consultant, things like that, versus a lots of people from the previous generation who are, say, would be 45 and older, they're so, super obsessed with like politics. I noticed that the older generations, baby boomers, things like that. They're super obsessed with politics and like the news and things like that. And I realized they want political change. They're super obsessed with conservatives and, and the latest news scandal because they haven't figured out solutions in their personal life. They're looking at these group solutions. We need to save the country and so on. And I think some of those points are valid. I have some political views. I don't necessarily cover them on the channel, but... The point is, is like you want to look at individual change because looking at group level change, countrywide change, I don't know if that's so realistic to really focus on because this system is kind of, you know, being rigged a certain way. You should look for an individual solution in a sense, because when you realize this system is a trap, um, people will call you crazy. They'll tell you to get back in the box, continue the rat race. Maybe you can change the system through the voting system, through local elections, if not, you know. Uh, countrywide elections you need to focus on uh, you know doing the standard life in some sense even though it's like ridiculously difficult to maybe afford to buy a house or have a stable long-term marriage and have kids without them being brainwashed so you really got to understand that men are kind of leaving the matrix if you want to call it that they're done with the nine-to-five system society's collapsing and many people
people, many men with some level of intelligence are waking up to it and they're looking for alternative solutions. Now, something I provide through my career advice service, there is a link in description, um, will help give you the, the important information you need to find an individual solution for yourself because there's no point relying on a politician, whoever that is, right? We've seen in the recent years, both left and right wing, they just don't have what it takes to get the job done. And a lot of them are not gonna address the real issue, which is around inflation, which comes down to the central bank printing money out of thin air. So what you need to do is figure out how you can build a career that will allow you to earn a high salary, save and invest and live life on your own terms. So if you want to speak with me and work on your career path and your finances, feel free to reach out to me with the link in description.